So, I hear you're trying to get better at PvP. Are you struggling to fight more than one PMC? Opening. He's throwing his... <laughs> I'll be helping you. <laughs> these 10 tips will improve your PvP on Tarkov. No BS, I use these tips almost every raid or I'm looking out for it. I see a lot of people giving generic tips. No, this is not generic. It's something that's actually useful and reliable. And it will give you the advantage that you want over your enemies. Quick plug, if you're interested in getting coached in Tarkov, I will be doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. All of that is linked below. If you want more information, click the more info link. I am on Twitch as well pretty much every day. I will be live by the time you see this video. So check me out. Very much appreciate it. But anyways, 10 tips to help you improve on PvP. Let's go. Tip number one. Most of the time, you're going to be quicker in your enemy's POV than your POV. Remember that when you're fighting because it's very, very valuable. I'll give you an example. My friend's POV and my POV. Shoot me on sight as soon as you see me, okay? I'm going to keep my cursor on the door. Wait, I wasn't ready. Alright, you ready? Yeah, yeah. What'd that look like on your PLV? Uh, you peek, disappeared, it was quick. And then once you peek far, it was hard for me to uh, correct my aim. Did you even try to react? Uh, second time, I didn't have time. Alright. You ready? Yeah. Shoot me on sight, man. Okay. Sorry to interrupt, by the way. I was just wondering if you want to check out some zaps and I see my four friends just see and check it out. Uh. I got a couple people that do design for me, though. I appreciate the offer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go for it. You ready? Yeah. Shoot me on sight, man. Sorry to interrupt, by the way. I was just wondering if you want to check out some zaps and I see my four friends. Check it out if you want. Uh, I got a couple people that do design. Yeah, yeah. See what I mean? That's quick. Yeah. I knew it would be quicker on your screen, but that's insane. Yeah. Shoot me on sight, man. It's really quick, bro. And you're aiming head level, too. Yeah. Jeez. When you pulled up, I did it twice so you wouldn't be ready for it because yeah. instinctively you already knew what was coming, so I had to kind of switch it up a little bit. Yeah, you got a point. Jesus. So that's a big difference, and you also got to factor in Peeker's advantage on top of that. You always want to be aware whether you're being stationary or a moving target. For the second tip, I'll teach you how to un-ADS without making any noise. This can be very, very useful if you want to be stealthy and get a drop on the team. To do this, you need to have overhead or right side blind fire set to a keybind and press the keybind while you're aimed in. This will cancel your ADS without making any noise. And a lot of people notice when you un-ADS rather than ADS most of the time. Because when people hear something, most of the time, they wait for a follow-up sound cue. So you saving yourself one sound cue as a solo player is huge. These are the two settings right here, overhead blind fire and right side blind fire. Just set that to any key bind, make sure it's easy to reach or whatever. And just click it while you're aimed in. Tip number three, see a lot of people doing this. See a lot of people flick their guns from full auto to single to full auto for that little click. Stop it. I'm not gonna lie, I used to be one of these people until I found the keybind in my controls to check firing mode. What this allows you to do, obviously, check firing mode, but it doesn't make any noise. So if you're not sure if you're in full auto or not, and you're trying to keep the element of surprise, this keybind will save your life, trust. This is very useful, especially if you're a solo player and the audio being as shit as it is, you wanna minimize the amount of sound cues you make. Tip number four, you always want to be aware if someone can push you while you pull and nade out or not. Whether you're trying to fake it or whatever, just make sure you have enough distance between the enemy and you so you can pull a nade without getting pushed and caught with your Wait. pants down. Yeah, Wait, pull one, it, like try two. fake it. Oh, actually, focus on the sounds, focus on the sounds. Yeah, no, I couldn't do it in time. So, try again. Always gonna be slow. Right. 
Yeah, there's no way. So, that's something I'm going to be teaching. Because the thing is, it's like, um, because you have nowhere to go, yeah. it's like you can't pull the nade. But from here, like, it's the same distance, pretty much. It's like if you're standing over here, it's pretty much the same distance as if you're standing over here. The only difference here is that I have somewhere to fall back to. But if you're in a corner, you have nowhere to go and you're dead. Even if you wanted to fake it, you still got to be aware of if they can push you or not. Because you really got to consider your environment. Just because the desk is there and you think I got to go all the way around. When in reality, I can jump over all of that and then I'm in your face. So just be careful of when you pull grenades. Please, please, man. I see too many of you guys dying to this shit. It's avoidable. All right, tip number five. What are we on? Five, six? I don't give a f Man, here's another tip. Down in the bunker, you'll see me jump peak a lot. A lot of people don't know how to do this. They ask me all the time, how do you jump forwards and backwards? I'll teach you in this video and I'll teach you areas that I do it in specifically. First of all, you want to make sure you have enough room above your head so you don't hit the ceiling. Otherwise, you'll look like this. Doesn't work here. Yeah, I know. You, you can only jump so far into this corner. Nah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't do it out there. Yeah, that's, that's it's cool. like you just do it in this corner right here. The furthest you can go is like right over here. The reason I would do this peak here is because the only way to clear sandbags is from a left hand peak. So this saves you from left hand peak and sandbags and it keeps you as a moving target. There's literally no disadvantages to doing this. Even if you have low strength or endurance, you're still able to jump peak for information. All it is is just keeping you as a moving target. Once you're a moving target, you're harder to hit. If you're harder to hit, you're harder to kill. Tip number six, grenades. A lot of people use grenades as utility to kill. I don't use it like this. I don't think of it like this. I think of it as a tool for information. You want to use grenades to bait movement, force people to move, take space, and cause panic. And what I mean by cause panic, if you want to push, lob a grenade down where the enemy is at. So he has two things to think about, the grenade and your push. If you do get a kill with it, that's great. That's just a bonus. I don't use grenades as a primary tool for kills. Unless somebody's trapped in a room or a corner, whatever, obviously, but... I use it mostly as a tool for information. Tip number seven. This game favors high sensitivity players. I would say just be able to do a 360 comfortably. So, you know, if, if so, someone's suddenly shooting you over there, it's like instead of like running around trying to, you know, do multiple mouse strokes and trying to get away, you can quickly <laughs> just be like, oh, somebody's over there. You can quickly turn yeah. around. And it looks really fast in their POV too. Having high sensitivity. Being able to just suddenly change directions. Right. This tip ties back into the one I was talking about where you look quicker in your enemy's POV rather than yours doing certain things. Obviously, there's going to be things that look slower for your enemy's POV and look quicker for you and vice versa. But this is one of the things you can take advantage of. Running around comfortably doing 360s is very, very fast in your enemy's POV. Right. Tip number nine. I already know a lot of people know this, but I know a handful of people that don't know uh, whether you're a casual or you're a sweat, everybody should know this. If you put on any tact device on your weapon and have it turned on, you'll have an increase in your hip fire accuracy by about 10 to 12 percent. Don't ask me how it works, it just works, but everybody should know this. Have any laser, just make sure it's turned on if you are going for a kill with hip fire. Last tip, tip number 10. If you're fighting a team as a solo or if you're outnumbered, try not to give up too much space for free. The more space you give them, the easier it is for them to corner you. And because they're in a team, you're outnumbered, it's easy for them to corner you if you give up too much map control. And when I say don't give up space for free, I mean fight for it. Make sure they fight for that space. Make sure you show presence to not give them confidence. Because most people, when they play this game and they see an enemy, which is a threat, they tend to be more cautious about pushing into that area. Area. You don't even need to land kill shots or heavy shots. Just show presence and people will approach it a lot more carefully. That guy. One more, one more where he was. I'm reloading. He's for our left? Yeah. Can you pull an head? No, I didn't pull an head, no. Can you pull an head? That, that, that. See that? 
remember i'm gonna be live on twitch by the time you see this it's on screen links in the description i appreciate the support on my recent videos also if you're trying to help me finesse the algorithm drop a like on the motherfucker even a comment sub if you like the content appreciate it i'm out see you on twitch